Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by diffusion. You should then be able to describe the factors that affect the rate of diffusion. I'm showing you here a box with a barrier down the center. Both sides of the barrier contain particles of gas A, and I'm showing those in green. As you can see, the concentration of gas A is the same on both sides of the barrier. However, one side of the barrier contains a high concentration of a different gas. We'll call this gas B, and I'm showing these particles as yellow. Now bear in mind that all of the particles have got kinetic energy as they're moving randomly, and particles are constantly colliding with each other. I've now removed the barrier. At this point, we now have a high concentration of gas B on the left-hand side, and a low concentration of gas B on the right-hand side. Scientists call this a concentration gradient. Over time, as the particles move randomly, the particles of gas B will spread out throughout the container. And at a certain point, the concentration of gas B will be the same everywhere. At this point, there is no concentration gradient. Now this spreading of particles is called diffusion. I'm showing you the definition of diffusion here. Diffusion is the net or overall movement of particles from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Now some students get confused by the words net movement. You need to bear in mind that particles move randomly in all directions. However, during diffusion, more particles are moving in one direction than the other. So net movement simply means the overall movement. So as you can see, diffusion occurs down the concentration gradient from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. I'm showing you here a cell with a high concentration of carbon dioxide inside and a lower concentration of carbon dioxide outside. As you can see, we have a concentration gradient for carbon dioxide. So as we saw before, the carbon dioxide molecules will diffuse from the region with a higher concentration, in other words, inside the cell, to the region with a lower concentration, in other words, outside the cell. And eventually, the concentration of carbon dioxide will be the same both inside and outside. At this point, scientists say that equilibrium has been reached. At equilibrium, there is no net movement of particles, so diffusion has stopped. Now, there are a couple of key points about diffusion that you need to remember. Firstly, diffusion is a passive process. This means that it does not require metabolic energy to take place, and the words metabolic energy mean energy released by respiration. Secondly, because some chemicals can easily diffuse through the cell membrane, while other chemicals cannot, the cell membrane is described as partially permeable. OK, let's look now at the factors that influence the rate of diffusion in and out of cells. Firstly, the greater the concentration gradient, the greater the rate of diffusion. Secondly, because the cell membrane contains a hydrophobic core, charged particles such as ions will not be able to diffuse through the membrane. Although I should point out that water molecules can diffuse through the membrane, even though water is a polar molecule. And that's because water molecules are very small. In contrast, uncharged molecules such as oxygen can diffuse rapidly across the membrane. The size of the particles is also important as well. Generally, smaller particles will diffuse faster than larger ones. OK, next is the temperature. In warmer conditions, particles have got more kinetic energy and diffuse faster than in colder conditions. Although I should point out that this is not really an issue for mammals and birds, which maintain a constant body temperature. OK, we now have the surface area of the membrane. Diffusion takes place more rapidly if the membrane has a larger surface area compared to a smaller surface area. And we'll see several examples of this later in the course. Next, we have the distance that diffusion takes place over. The greater the distance, the slower the rate of diffusion. And this explains why cell membranes are extremely thin. And lastly, we have the presence of protein channels or carrier proteins in the membrane. Now I should point out that in this case, we're looking at a special type of diffusion called facilitated diffusion. And we'll look at that in the next video. OK, so hopefully now you can describe what's meant by diffusion and the factors that affect the rate of diffusion. 